the project, the boat I bought, it's called Harbour Conquest. I think with the name like Harbour Conquest, how can you not go wrong? I think it's just sick. Um, but anyway, so Harbour Conquest is a 44 foot X rescue boat slash lifeboat. Um, it's a US Coast Guard design that was uh, picked up by the English uh, and they were going through a period in the late 1960s where they were trying to update and modernise their um, their search and rescue fleet, their, their Coast Guard uh, lifeboat, the RNLI, lifeboat service I think they call it, uh, in England. Um, and they adopted this US Coast Guard design and built a whole bunch of boats. And so mine is uh, number four, I believe, of the production run. So it's a very early boat. It was built in 1967. Uh, like I said, it's 44 foot, uh, I think it's 3.7 metre beam, uh, 1.2 metre draft, uh, and length for those not in feet, it's uh, 13 and a half metres. So, steel hull, aluminium superstructure, it's got a small pilot house, um, fairly compact galley, uh, big V berth, and a large engine room, and a whole bunch of other compartments, a lazarette at the back of the boat. It's um it's a really sweet boat. It it feels very stable, very manoeuvrable, highly manoeuvrable, twin screw. Um, it's got a raised bow and uh, and a raised stern. And it's funny the stern is, is is round, so I notice when you really punch it backwards, like it just it rips backwards, rips forwards. It's so manoeuvrable, so agile. It's, it's really really awesome. Um, it's powered by two Caterpillar 3208 V8 diesels, uh, naturally aspirated diesels, um, and I wanted to go that route just to keep, you know, it's a big boat, it's got a lot of complex systems, but I just wanted to keep everything as simple as I could. So each of the cats are 210 shaft horsepower, and obviously the boat runs on shafts and it drives uh, two four blade um, propellers. And definitely has plenty of grunt, more than probably I'll need. She's no speed demon, she cruises at about 10 knots. Apparently maxes out at about 14, 15 knots. Probably burns 10 times the juice doing it. So it's just made to put along uh, and get through anything. Like it, it will literally, from what I've researched and what I've seen online and having a chat to the, the guys I've bought it off and a couple of mates in Sea Rescue, they, um, you know, this thing, you can throw 40 knot storm surges at it and it'll be able to punch through. It's designed to self right if it ever capsizes, um, but can handle a knockdown. It's got a whole bunch of systems which I'll show you when we sort of get into the boat um, and how it deals with that sort of stuff. So, really interesting boat. Um, look, I don't think I'm going to be putting it into conditions where I find myself getting knocked down or capsized. Um, you know, I really do have bigger problems at that point, but it's nice to know that the boat is built to take it and. Look, when you see it, it is really honestly built like a tank. It's uh, it's insane. The hull's actually double skinned. It's got two hulls effectively, so if an outer hull is breached, it will still remain watertight um, and get you home. So how I came onto this boat was actually, um, you know, I like to say it bound me versus um, you know me trolling, spending hours and hours and hours working through Gumtree and boats online and all sorts of stuff. Um, but I've been looking at a couple of uh, steel boats, and I was just. I, I, one of the particularly I was quite keen to take on as a project, but I just couldn't get insurance to save my life. And I almost went ahead with it anyway to get it up to scratch, get it to pass an insurance survey, and um, you know, take the risk until I sort of got it to that point. But I was just terrified of this thing. This thing was, it was definitely wasn't seaworthy. You know, it had weeping stern glands, um, all sorts of things that just wasn't right. And I, I was speaking to a mate of mine, and he said, look, have a chat to a mate of his, and he described him as Dave, who's basically a professional pirate. So I was like, okay, I'll call Dave. Um, <clears throat> and Dave was awesome. He's like, oh, look, don't worry about that. This is what we're going to do um, if it sinks, and you know, it won't be the thirty to $40,000 salvage operation that some people have been throwing around. I'm like, okay, that's good. Um, but he, in the chat, he said, oh, look, actually, I know a boat that you might like. Um, that's up your alley. So he put me onto a, another mate called Titus, and Titus called a guy called Michael. Uh, anyway, before I knew it, I was speaking to Michael about this boat, a couple of photos came through, and I was like, yeah, I think this could be the one. This actually looks pretty sweet. Obviously, it's had a lot of history, and this is what I'm just trying to work out where 
this boat fits in line with that and what it actually did. But from what I can understand at the moment, it um, it started off in service on the Scottish coast and then did some work in Northern Ireland. Um, then it found its way into New South Wales, where it's been quite a few years um, as a rescue vessel for the New South Wales Volunteer um, Sea Rescue Service up along the north coast there. And then it found its way to Perth or Fremantle Harbour, um, where it spent the last 10 years as a work boat, as a line boat slash tug sort of thing. Um, the company I bought it off has um, decided to retire the vessel, so it's probably at a point where it's been well used. They're converting their business operation to um, to run with more modern jet-powered boats, and uh, this one needed to find a new home. So they were going to scrap the boat. They were going to um, effectively take the motors out, sell the motors, and sell anything off of value, and have the boat scrapped. They didn't want to sell the boat because they didn't want it to go in to a person or a company that they were going to have to compete with. The boat uh, is in commercial survey at the moment and now I have to now take it out of commercial survey and rec uh, register it as a recreational vessel, which is a whole set of challenges on its own, which we'll talk about another day. But look, it's going to be an awesome boat. It, I've been looking at a lot of older boats and, and I really like steel boats. I don't know what it is about steel, but you know, as far as boat materials go, They've all got their strengths and weaknesses. I knew one thing, I definitely didn't want a wooden boat because that's a whole new level of pain and I'm a sucker for punishment, but that's just taking it to a whole new level. Um, you know, aluminium's fantastic. Uh, a lot of the good ex-commercial aluminium boats are probably out of my price range. And um, what I like about steel is it's very strong. It's easy to work with. I'm very comfortable with a welder, especially working with steel. So all the uh, fabrication repair work, any modifications I want to do with the steel, component of the hull, I can do myself quite comfortably and that's um, that's good, hopefully it's a bit of cost. And what I also like about steel is you can see the corrosion, you know, if you get a steel boat that hasn't been looked after, you're going to see straight away where it needs work and what you need to do. Um, so that's good, but you know, the downside of that is you've got to stay on top of it, you've got to stay on top of the paint protection systems and everything that goes with a steel boat to make sure it's, you know, it's in good nick, it looks good. You, uh, you don't have any signs of what is you know, steel cancer you know, um, that's going to eventually be terminal to the boat. So, um, so definitely put the pressure on the owner to make up for that. But if you're comfortable with it and you like that sort of work, that's great. Um, I just uh, fiberglass just isn't my style. Um, they they look fantastic. You know, moulded decks, beautiful lines. You know, the polish on a fiberglass boat, especially a really nice fiberglass boat, is, you know, it's world class and it doesn't get any better than that. But I, it's just not my style of boat. I, um, I'd much prefer to rock up to, you know, a mooring or go to Rotto or do some cruising in a boat that has a bit of history, has a bit of character, it's well loved. It's not so pretty to the point where you're worrying about fenders and docking and all sorts of stuff. I sort of want to be able to use it how I want to use it, keep it in good nick, keep it looking good but not be so worried about a nick or a scratch or here and there and you know constantly running around patching gel coat and dealing with osmosis and and um, you know hairline cracking that sort of comes with five glass posts especially as they get older it's just not um, not something I really want to do when I bought the boat I had it checked over by a shipwright uh, I, I sort of knew what I was looking at but I just wanted to get a professional's opinion around one, am I completely nuts? Um, what I think is okay, is that okay? And what I think needs work, it probably does need work, but what that's going to cost. And um, Aaron was awesome. Uh, I'm sure if we do more videos and you follow my journey, um, we'll introduce you to him. And if anyone in WA needs a ship ride, this is your guy. Um, but he, you know, his comments were that the boat, it's a, it's a little ship, it's a beautiful boat. Uh, it's, been, well, it's been maintained fairly well up to this point, but it's at a point where the company knew they were going to retire it and they've sort of just stopped spending money on it. And it's been sitting idle for about six, 12 months, not really doing a lot. So it needs a good love. I tried to have the boat um, insured before I took possession. And the plan was to get buy the boat, get it on my mooring uh, in Claremont and start to do some work on the boat and just tidy it up and get it running and, and get it sweet or do as much as I could while I was on the water. When I lifted the boat uh, about a month ago when we started looking at it to 
try and do a deal. Um, you know, the, the antifoul was well and truly ready for a, a new coat of paint. Um, anodes were, were starting to go beyond you know, the point of what well, I would think that's good. They definitely need to be replaced. And um, yeah, so we did the insurance inspection at that point with the insurance survey. Uh, it failed, I wouldn't say miserably, but a lot of things came up that uh, which we were expecting. But so it, it, it failed because the anchor winch wasn't serviceable. The original ones, obviously, well past its use by date and seized up. Um, ground tackle wasn't wasn't sufficient. The gate. Um, Valve sea cogs below the water line uh, all needed to be serviced. A couple of them were weeping, a couple of them couldn't be shut off. That doesn't make me um, feel very warm and fuzzy at night, so uh, so they definitely had to be done. Um, it's got two sets of four 12 volt batteries that are all stuffed, so we have to sort out the, uh, the battery banks. They barely had enough power to crank the motor. Um, and safety gear and a few, um, a few other little bits and bobs. So as far as the hull goes, it's actually quite clean. I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust here and there, but it's nothing um, that I would consider an issue for an old steel boat. Obviously, you've got to get on top of all that now before it gets any worse. So a lot of people, well, when I say a lot of people, like my mates have asked me, why the hell did you buy this boat? And, you know, for me, I wanted a larger boat. I've had a lot of smaller boats around, you know, five metres, six metres, six and a half um, metres. So that's sort of the 16 to 21 foot uh, size boats. Um, you know, runabouts, centre consoles, cabins, cruisers. They've all been good, but like with all boats, and I think this is true for any boat, like, you, you know, you'll never have a boat that's perfect for everything. It's always going to be a compromise. And, um, you know, needs and wants always evolve when you have boats. You know, I've got a uh, growing family. My um, overwhelmingly supportive wife, Maria, somehow let me uh, dive into this project. Uh, but we've now got a couple of small kids. So I've got a little girl, four years old, a little boy who's two. And yeah, look, we just, we really do need a slightly larger boat to be able to get everybody out there safely. Um, and so everyone's having a good time. They've got a bit of room to move and we can just change how we use the boat. It's definitely changed from the days of, you know, the boys going off getting craze or going for a dive and do some fishing to, you know, um, trying to sneak away from the family and not get busted. Um, but look, now I hopefully have a boat that I can be able to bring the family on. We can do some expeditions, we can do some trips. I can still do a lot of diving and a lot of fishing and all the stuff that I like to do on boats um, and enjoy it with the family. So, and I am a full blown uh, DIY junkie. I love to tinker, I love playing with things, and this thing just looks like it's going to keep me tinkering and playing for the next 10 years. So, that was right up my alley. So the reason I'm going to do a YouTube channel is just to share, I guess, my journey and uh, my progress and show you some of the things that I do along the way um, and hopefully inspire people that, you know, you can anyone can take on a project like this and I follow a lot of people that are doing a lot of sailing, a lot of boating, you know, anyone doing a restoration project on a car, boat, plane, I just absolutely dig all that and I think it's an awesome way to share your knowledge, your passion and um, you know, inspire people and, and uh, teach people something that they may not know. I know me personally, I've learned a lot of uh, skills that I've been able to use myself um, just by watching YouTube and just um, drawing inspiration and learning. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. So that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, this, um, this channel is definitely not going to be a high-end production. Like I literally don't have any gear other than iPhone. Um, and we're just gonna roll with it and see how we go. Um, my intention is just to share my journey. Hopefully I can teach, um, you know, the YouTube world a little bit about what I'm doing, my project. You can drive some passion, hopefully learn something you didn't know before and take inspiration, you know, that's I think that's the greatest thing. You can do anything if you can find the knowledge, you have the time or you make the time. And if you want it bad enough, You'll get there, you'll get it done. You just gotta to commit to it and go for gold. So, um, yeah, this is gonna be fun. It'd be awesome to see if uh, people know a little bit about this boat, or this class of boat, you know, the old Waveney uh, lifeboats. Uh, if anyone's got any comments or any feedback or knowledge about the boat they'd like to share, if anyone's got any ideas of what I'm doing, I can be doing it differently, I'd love to hear it. You know, the more feedback, the better. Um, but we're nearly at um, Northport Marine where the boat's on the hard, and 
and yeah, once we rock up, we'll uh, we'll do a bit of a tour of the boat and start to get stuck into work.